Uh, hi everyone, welcome back to the video on my Storytime channel. So I'm going to continue reading They Shook Hands, I'm up to chapter 18 right now. Chapter 18, The Race to the Stone. So to recap, you know, Harry and his friends, you know, they're they're trying to stop Quirrell or Snape, depending on who it is, you know, that's going after the stone. You know, the nine, the ten, the nine Slytherins, nine Slytherins because Blaze left, yeah, the nine Slytherins put the, piece, put the pieces of the puzzle together. They were solving the clues, they, you know, thought about it, you know, they gave this a lot of thought. And they realize the truth that someone's after the stone that day, so they're obviously going to go after it. So here it is. They shook hands, year one, chapter 18, the race of the stone. Goyle peered down into the darkness. If there was a bed of spikes at the bottom of this hole, I'm going to be very upset, he said. Without further ado, he hopped lightly into the square of blackness and vanished from sight. Yar! Goyle! Harry called down. Goyle, you all right? I've learned the plan, I think, his voice echoed up, up, up to them. He jumped down. Crab shrugged and hopped after his friend. Theo leapt in, left in after him. The girls jumped as well. Finally, only Harry and Draco were left. Jumping into blackness is like this is something a Gryffindor would do. Draco said, his house prejudice is appearing, appearing even now. Don't ever tell anyone I did this. Yeah! He drove down into the darkness. Harry followed out the word. He landed on some sort of plant, just as Goyle had said. He made a muffled funny sounding thump as he landed. All around him was gloom and darkness. Someone, someone make a light, Harry called out. Lumos, Tracy said. Then she shrieked, get out of here. Light revealed the huge plant with vines and tendrils everywhere. Stubbly, sneakily, vines had crept up in the darkness and ensnared them. Now as they realize their predicament, they try to fear them, free themselves, but the creepers bound them faster the harder they struggled. It's double snare, Theo shouted. It's like, it's like it likes damp and dark. We need light and heat. He arced back as the vines went for his throat. And sending it with Goyle shouted, having managed to draw his wand, Bright orange flames up from the tip, lighting all over the plant. Instantly, the creeper vines began to retreat, wriggling and failing to escape. One by one, they each, they each pulled themselves free of the loosening vines onto the onto stone floor. Good work, Goyle, Theo said. Once again, your little fire spell saves the day. If you need fire, I'm your man, Goyle said, grinning. You're just destined to be a pyromancer, Millie ribbed him. You're just destined to be a, destined to be a pyromancer, Millie ribbed him. Thankfully, stone doesn't burn, so our part of the castle is safe. The only way forward was down the sloping pa stone passageway. Far from their footsteps, all they could hear was the sound of their own breathing and a gentle drip of water trickling down the walls. Light at the end of the corridor beckoned to them, and Tracy extinguished her wand light. What's this sound, Pansy asked, as he strained their ears as a fluttering, rustling, clicking sound could be heard from up ahead. It came from a brilliantly lit chamber, its ceiling arcing high above their heads. It was filled with small birds, bright like jewels, fluttering and tumbling all around the room. On the opposite wall, they could see a plain, heavy wooden door. They stood at the entrance to the room, considering. Chance of being attacked by the birds by if we step into this room, Draco asked lightly. Probably fairly high, Theo mused. He drew his wand and pointed at the, at the far door. I think we're too far away, but a little more. A jet of white light shot from the tip of his wand but fell short of the door. One of us has to go out there. I will, Tracy said confidently. I cannot lock the door. Without waiting for anyone to object, she jarred into the light-filled room, running across the smooth stone floor to the heavy wooden floor. No birds made a motion towards, it, towards her. I think it's safe to come this far. You open the door, Draco said, Draco said easily. We'll just watch and approve him over here. She stuck her tongue out at him and cast a spell on the door. The lock flared with white light. The handle suddenly refused to turn. Because we had to figure out it a different way, she said. The others meandered into the room. Theo gazed up at this open space where all the blurs fluttered around in a lazy manner. He looked deep in thought. There's got to be some kind of sort of connection, he mumbled, scratching his, scratching his chin. There wouldn't be here if they didn't have a purpose. The birds were tiny, rather hard to see. They soared overhead, glittering in the torchlight. Millie groaned. Oh, by Merlin's robes. It's so obvious. What kind of a bird is all sparkly like that? Look closely. They're not birds at all. They're keys. Winged keys. They peered up at the birds, straining their eyes. One by one, they each nodded the truth of Millie's words. Well, if they got wings, there's got to be a way to key up, get up there and nab it, Daphne reasoned. She investigated the darker corners. Aha! Broomsticks! We've got to fly up and catch the key to the door. Harry can do that easily, Tracy said enthusiastically. Harry's not going to do a bloody thing, Theo said firmly. We're not going to take any necessary risks. You hear me, Harry? You're too important for that. You need to stop you and who from getting the stone. But I can get that key, Harry protested. He loved to fly, and catching the correct key would be simplicity itself. So can I, Draco said, pick up a broomstick. Hey, a Nimbus 1700, not bad. He mounted and kicked off. Draco could fly. Harry, no illusions about that. Now that he had a decently quality broomstick under him, he was able to show up some moves that simply weren't possible with the broken down school owned equipment. Draco made quick changes to his course, flying his broom with speed and skill. He would have made an excellent seeker, Harry thought. There's too many of them, Draco called. Draco called. He would have, he would have made an excellent seeker, Harry thought. There's too many of them, Draco called down to them. We'll be forever catching and, tr catching and trying them all. Pansy examined the lock. Look for a silver key to match the lock. Big and old-fashioned, like the keys from Alfoy Manor. Harry Chaff had not been permitted to go up into the air. He felt at home there, and he knew he, knew he would never fall off. He managed to stay on a jinx. He managed to stay on a jinx broom after all. Could Draco say the same? 
The keys were a great protection for the stone. There were hundreds of them, and they all darted and dived so quickly that catching one was nearly impossible. Once you caught one that wasn't the right key, you had to let it go to wander back out and mingle with the others. I've caught this key already, Draco shouted angrily. Clearly, they, need, they needed a new plan. Harry grabbed the other broom. He mounted the kicked off where anyone could stop him. He was the youngest seeker in the century, had a knack for spotting as the others could not. He woke through the whirling cloud of glittering rainbow feathers and saw a large silver, silver key that gave him a good feeling. There, he said, pointing, that big silver one with the bright blue wings. How do you know? I just know. Good enough for me, Draco said, zooming by. Now get to the ground. Now get to ground. No way, Harry responded, leaning, leaning low over his broom and taking off after Draco. Harry, knock it off, Draco called to him as, as he chased after the key. Through the ceiling beams, they flew left and right, up and down, back and front, and all around. The flock of keys started, started zooming after, around after the boys, seemingly enchanted to protect the one key. No, I can get that key, Harry suddenly felt his desire to stand out to prove he, that, he, that he didn't need protection. Here in the air, he, he was in his element, and nothing could stop him. They were neck and neck now, both reaching for the key, which fluttered around, along him, in front of them, just like the switch. Just like a snitch. Harry flashed back to the times he played pickup pick games of Quidditch and remembered that Draco had been limited to, by the inferior broom. He reached out his hand just a little further. Draco put his broom, into, his broom into Harry's. Sorry, he called. It'd probably be an accident, but only highly the risks that, that flying encompassed. Harry didn't answer, but leaned so low he was probably practically hugging his broomstick. He stretched his hand just a few in, fraction of an inch further and managed to look, hook a broken finger through the ring of the key. God, he shouted happily. He showed a slow of a pursuing flock of keys immediately swarmed at him. His broom sang steadily towards the floor. Gah, get off, stupid birds. The instant the key was placed in the lock, the other keys flew off. Once it was turned, the door unlocked. The key took flight again, looking a little battered and abused now that they had been caught. One of the wings is bent, they couldn't fly straight anymore. Ready, Harry asked, looking at the happy faces of his friends. What? Tracy hugged him. Harry, that was so reckless. It was something a Gryffindor would do, Pansy said, her voice half sneering. Oh, so now Draco acts like a Gryffindor, Harry reposted. Draco, what do you think about that? He pulled open the door. I think that I'm, not, that I'm not, as, not as important as you are, you get, Draco said, stepping first to, a, to, a, to the dark chamber beyond the door. No dark, dark lord tried to kill me, so I can take a few risks here and there when I'm, we're on our way to confront on our way to confront one of his followers. As soon as they stepped into the dark chamber, the door slammed shut behind them, and torchlight suddenly flooded the room, blinding them, revealing an astonishing sight. He stood on the edge of a huge chessboard behind the black pieces draw taller than they and carved from onyx. Across the way were the white pieces, smooky and ominous, creepy for the flickering torches that revealed that the white chessmen had no faces. This is brilliant, Theo enthused. I can go over one of these in, my, in the backyard. Now what? Millie asked. Unless I am wrong and I am never wrong, Theo said, ignoring Pansy short of his snore derision. We have to play our way across the board. We've got to defeat the opposing army to reach. Yes, see that door behind the white pieces? Draco grimaced. If only Elon were down here, he'd wipe the board clean in five minutes flat. Well, he's not here, Daphne said. At least Theo is a resident chessbird. You started me? Yeah, yes, you, Harry Charm. You taught me a lot about the game. You can do this, I know it. I told you the basics, Harry. Something like this, he gestured, is liable to be to be beyond far beyond my poor skill. Stop being modest, Pansy told him crossly. You can do this. Just don't think about it in the play as though as though as though it were any other game. Theo nodded his head slowly. Alright, I'll do it, but how? White moves first and those pieces aren't going anywhere. Join us. The word shocked him because none of the boys could have produced a voice that deep and powerful. He looked up into the shining eyes of the Black King. You mean to take a place of some of your pieces, Tracy asked? The Black King nodded solemnly. Right, Theo said this is decisively slipping to his appropriate mindset. Crab and Goyle go to the corners and replace the rooks. Next to them, Pansy and Millie will be our knights. Draco, Daphne, you two replace the bishops. And I get to be the queen? Tracy, Tracy inquired perkily. Unless Harry wants it, Draco snickered. His, Harry felt himself blushing. No, Harry will be the king. He's the most important piece and the safest one as it's, take, as it's taken last. Theo was not, was not really looking at them. He studied the board, probably playing out some possible sequences of moves in his head. Probably playing. He studied the board, probably playing out possible sequences of moves in his head. Where will you be, Harry asked him. Theo looked directly at Harry, his dark brown eyes very serious. I'll be standing here. I will be the chess master. The back row cleared of pieces and the Slytherins took their places. There was silence for a moment, then the pawn moved to King 4. Theo's directions were crisp, clear, and blunt. No one argued with him. Chess is not played by committee. He directed the black pieces all around, directed the, black pieces around the board. The pawns, the only remaining onyx figures, were silent as they, silent as they obeyed orders. It was quite a, quite a shock when the first piece was taken. Their pawn thrust out with the spear and pierced the white pawn, dropped its stone sword. Stattered stone chips, stone chips flew as the place was destroyed, just like a real, real wizard chess. Theo visibly gulped. He played defensively as he was keen to protect his friends. He moved the pawns forward, move, moving significant pieces up in each, each in turn to guard them. He captured opposing pieces with his, but the pawns, grabbing each one of each of his own that was taken, for each loss further exposed his friends to danger. Finally, only four pawns were left. Theo had done well, taking more a quarter of the white pieces. The chessboard was littered with the rubble and dust of the destroyed marble statues. His own pieces were arrayed for a defense. He could not press the white 
for the white king without losing some of his, some of his more valuable pieces. Then his friends would get hurt, but if he continued to play defensively, he would sort of soon start to lose them anyway. A drop of sweat rolled down his face. The unseen chess master was good, in fact, brilliant. Every move had a counter move, blocking the on every on everything he could try to do. It was as though the essence of many great masters had been distilled and distributed in the magic of the board. How could he beat that? He studied the board intently, taking his time. There was no there was no time clock in this match. The white pieces were scattered except three protecting the king. The king was blocked. Theo looked again. The king was still blocked, trapped, unable to move in three directions. Had he found a weakness? Was that the key? He drew a sequence in his mind. Two moves. It was right there. He stared wide-eyed, wild-eyed the board served as a trap. The bulls and chessmaster was too good for that. It had to be a trick. But there was nothing presently in the position to trap a piece that moved into that region. Only the last white rook could be moved into position to defend the square of the trees. He could step in to checkmate, checkmate the king. His eyes fell on Pansy. She was in a perfect position to intercept that rook and she would be sacrificed. Theo bit his lip. He had to do it. There was no other way to win. Knight to King's Knight 4, he said in a small voice. He didn't feel very good about himself right then. Theo, Draco said startled. That'll put her right. I know, Theo burst out. I know. But she has to do it. It blocks the rook. And it leaves Tracy free to check the king. It's the only way to win. Pansy looked very scared. Her eyes were wide as she stared up at the massive, solid rook. I can see the moves that he's right. If I'm taken, the game is over. Her voice trembled, but she began walking. Each step, she came, step came closer and sl came slower and slower. Only after a few, another few steps, she would carry her into the square, but she did not take them. Her face was green. With a pitiful cry, she collapsed to the board, crying uncontrollably. I can't, she wept. I, I'm scared. Please don't make me. Harry's heart lurched in sympathy. He'd been holding his breath practically the whole game, half sick with fear for, for his friends, praying that Theo wouldn't make a mistake. He hadn't, but now he had been called to make a difficult decision. Panty Harry called to her. He half took a step. No, Theo shouted. Don't move. You can't or we'll lose even more. Or we'll lose even more. Pansy, she lay on the board, shaking and sobbing. Pansy, you have to be strong, he told her. I know you're, you're scared, but this is the only way. When we win, I'll stay. I'll take care of you, but we have to do this. Each of them was aching to go, to go to her. Nothing could be more difficult than having to, no, one, no one to come for you. Nothing could be more frightening than being told that you must risk your life. But her weeping ceased. She lifted her head and looked right at Theo. You'll stay with me, she said in a small, scared voice. I promise, he told her. She slowly got to her feet. She moved with her back to the rook and looked at Theo. She took, they took one step backwards in the, in the designated square. The rook came to life, morphing from a stone power, tower to a rock monster. It raised one horrible hand and slapped at her. She never saw it coming. She was flung up into the air, off the board, and against one of the stone pillars at the side of the sickening sound. Harry winced. Quickly, Theo, Theo said, said in a stick voice, Tracy, run up, and, run up and stand a square away from the king. Tracy ran. She set foot inside the square. Checkmate, Theo called, running to Pansy's side. The king's great sword, which he had been, which he had been resting his hands on, which he had been resting his hands on, point down, fell loose and crashed to, the, crashed to the board. He reached up and removed his crown, dropping on the board at Tracy's feet. The game was over. Those who had, been, those who had played rushed to where Pansy lay with a small pool of blood under her head. Is she all right, Daphne asked, aside from being bashed to a pillow like that, of course. I don't think her head's cracked, Theo said, probing at the back of Pansy's skull. Guy enormous lump here, though. She won't be waking up for a long time, but she'll be happy about that. If she's lucky, she won't wake up until after she's been treated. Harry brushed away a stray lock of Pansy's hair. I think she's already been really lucky. She could have been killed. I know Theo's voice is a little more than the whisper, but it had to be done. He said his jaw and looked up at the mall. We need to keep going. I'll stay here. Pansy needs Madame Pomfrey, Drake would say. Turn to Crab. Get back up into the castle. Go find any teacher except McGonagall and get help. The rest of us going after the stone. Crab not only opened the door back to the key room. None of the chessmen had been a conqueror. Dormant, the door stayed open. Harry, Draco, Millie, Daphne, Tracy, and Goyle all walked towards the far door. They emerged to a stone cord, another stone corridor, respite before the next challenge. A disgusting odor waved, waved out at them, wafted out at them when Harry pushed open the door at the end of this hallway. He tried not to gag. He held his nose and took shallow breaths. Tracy pulled the robes up over her face. Ew, she said, retching. Harry and Draco returned to each other with long expressions. You don't think, Draco, Draco said, his voice full of dread. I've seen too much light tonight to dismiss anything, Harry replied. So it's just one of the just the one we tangled with on Halloween. I hope there are some calms in that room. You three were foolish to go after her in the first place, Tracy told him. So Snape told me, Harry said with a grin, and so Draco objected at the time. I objected to this as well, Draco said, but I can't see that we have any other choice. Let's get a look. Let's get a look. Harry and Draco peered into the room, trying not to breathe. It was a mountain troll, all right, even bigger and uglier than the last one. Two carried a huge club. Unfortunately, they, cannot, they did not see any suitable object, other, ob, other suitable objects were bashing it on the head. What spells do we know that would be useful? The Harry asked. I'd begin to take his club away like Theo did. Trolls were resistance to direct magic. That there's, that's only one weapon. I think that's all we get. So who gets to do it? I will, Tracy said. I'm the best at, levitation, at the levitation charm. She is, Harry said. Then settled, Draco agreed. How are we going to get distracted? I think I can do it from behind the door. I can't get through the door. I wonder how, how they got in here in the first place. We'll ask Dumbledore, Dumbledore later. Good luck. Tracy put her head to the crack in the door. Oh my god, you three really are idiots. I know we said so before and I meant it, but now that I'm actually seeing, seeing one for myself, I need to say it again. What on earth were you thinking last last Halloween? Harry and Draco looked sheepishly at each other. We tried to stop him, Harry said. 
not hard enough. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I can't believe I'm going to do this. The club, focus on the club. Wingardium Leviosa. Though they could not see it happen, the melee thub, thunk of the club hitting Troll's head was very distinct, and the roar of the pain hurt their eyes. From the sound of things, the first hit hadn't done it. You can do it, Tracy, Harry whispered. Okay, so that's part one of They Shook Hands, year one, chapter 18. I'm going to update you guys with part two. Take care, everybody. Another view from my story time channel.